horse racing fans, it's Mark with InHereTheCome.com. We're getting ready for the 41st Breeders' Cup Championships, which will be held at Del Mar for just the third time in 41 years. It's a week from today. It'll be next Saturday, Friday and Saturday, November 1st and the 2nd. What we're going to do is just briefly go over... Um, the juvenile division, as far as how favorites have done um, in recent years in that division, as well as what the average payoffs have been over uh, in recent years and some of the uh, key factors in handicapping the, uh, the juvenile division. Here is shows you the last 14 years of favorites and how they did in the juvenile. As you can see only in red there, only four have won the division in 14 years. So they don't win as often as you might think. However, they do finish in the trifecta almost all the time. As a matter of fact, it looks like there is only, what, one, two years out of the last four years that the favorite did not finish in the superfecta. So we definitely want to take a strong look at the favorite and, um, and be sure to use them in our uh, putting together our trifectas and superfectas. Um, of those favorites, um, two of them uh, were Bob Baffert runners. Uh, Corniche in 2021, which was the last time the races were held at Del Mar. And then he also won in 2018 with Game Winner. Now, the first time the uh, Breeders' Cup was at Del Mar was 2017. That's when Bolt Oro won as the odds-on favorite. Um, um, so, and, and that was a California trainer, Mick Ruiz. And so we want to take also a strong look at the uh, California trainer's in the um, uh, with their runners in the juvenile division, but we certainly are going to use favorites in our uh, in our plays, um, just not probably to win. As we said, there was only four favorites that won in the last fourteen years, and only two favorites finished out of the superfecta in those fourteen years. However, the favorites have finished in the exact nine of the last 14 years. So we're doing pretty good there for winning win or second place is where we're going to use the favorite. Uh, the average $2 win payoff over the last 10 years is a nice $23.62. So that's an average of just slightly over uh, odds of 10 to 1. Um, has been winning the races as an average over the most recent 10 years. Now, in those 10 years, here are the payoffs in those 10 years. The 10-year average, again, for the win payoff is 23.62. The $2 exact is averaging $243. A dollar trifecta, a lot of ones there, $1,111. And the dollar superfecta, $8,629. So even though the favorites are running first or second, generally second, uh, we're still getting nice payoffs, uh, even on the win position at $23.62. Uh, but then in the super facta, is paying, what, eight times more than what the uh, dollar trifecta is paying at $1,111. So we definitely um, want to make some nice plays here on the super facta, and we're going to probably key the exacta in second here, I mean the favorite in in second um, throughout those levels um, uh, for our play on our tickets. Uh, again, we, we, we probably don't want to use the favorite as our win selection but certainly to be in the trifecta. Trainer Pletcher, he's won the last two editions. However, I don't believe he has <clears throat> excuse me, any runners uh, pre-entered this year, it doesn't look like. Um, there's only been two juvenile division winners that have been able to go on and win the Kentucky Derby in the next year. So whoever does win the race this year, 
Eh, we're not going to bet them to win the Kentucky Derby next year, that's for sure. Again, the Super Fact has averaged eight thousand six hundred twenty-eight dollars over the last ten years, so we definitely want to have um, some tickets in, in, uh, on the Super Factor here. Keep in mind, single-digit odds horses have finished in two of the three trifecta spots in twenty-three of the last twenty-six years. So you're looking at the let's just take the three post-time favorites in two of those three are probably going to be in the trifecta. It's that long shot one that we got to find out who that is that we're going to put in there. And that's what you'll find uh, with our um, our winning profile. Uh, the Breeders' Cup winning your end challenge races for the juvenile division. There was only three of them uh, for the juvenile. Uh, that's the Champagne Stakes, the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland, and the American Feral Stakes at Santa Anita. In the last 13 years, a winner from the Challenge Series in the Juvenile Division has been able to win the race six times. So almost, almost 50% of the time in the last 13 years, a winner from the Challenge Series has won the Juvenile. Now, the American Feral and the Breeders' Futurity Stakes, they've each produced two winners um, two times in, in those 13 years. So we certainly want to take a strong look at those. And this year, the winners of those two races is Citizen Bull in East Avenue. Um, of course, the other challenge race is Champagne. That was won by Chancellor McPatrick. So we're going to take a look at him. Uh, East Coast Horse, uh, how, how will he fare um, in Santa Anita on the faster track. I am not so sure. But we definitely want to look at the American Feral winner and the Breeders' Futurity winner. In our um, winning profile for the juvenile division, there's 18 additional factors that we found to be critical in being able to handicap the field and picking a winner and what long who the long shots are to use in our um, trifecta and superfecta plays. This year, keep in mind, there's three invaders um, from Europe and Japan. Two from Europe and one from Japan. Uh, how do they fit our winning profile? Well, we're going to have to match them up uh, with those 18 factors and see how they, uh, how they um, uh, score out there. Uh, but, of course, the Japanese runners have been hot in recent years, in the last couple of years, um, um, at the Breeders' Cup. As a matter of fact, they got their first winners in 2021 when it was at Del Mar, uh, where we are again this year. And then uh, the Baffert, who's won five, five times this division, he has three runners pre-entered uh, this year. Uh, it looks like there's Citizen Bull Gaming and Getaway Car. I like that name, Getaway Car. Um, so, obviously take a Strong look at handicapping those three runners from the Baffert Barn. With our uh, Proving Winning Breeders' Cup profiles, uh, you'll get to know all the critical factors of each division um, that we found that is to be critical factors and have proven themselves over the 40 years of the Breeders' Cup races. You'll know which prep races provide the most winners in each division. You'll also know which which races the favorites win most often and which races to stay away from the favorite. That's key in playing your pick three, pick four, pick five, and pick six tickets. You'll know where you only need to use a couple runners that, that are favorites as opposed to using more runners uh, using long shot plays in there. So you, you'll also know which races to spread out in in your trifecta and superfectus. Um, so like in the juvenile, we're not really going to spread out a lot. Uh, we're going to use our three favorites and throw in, uh, and use the, the most relevant long shots that fit the criteria, uh, the factors in our, uh, juvenile profile. The Breeders' Cup races are never what they seem to be at first glance. It is critical that you know those factors that have been proven <coughs> excuse me, to be the most important in handicapping the, the races. With better information, sharper proven angles, that is the key in picking winners on Breeders' Cup weekend. You must be able to separate the contenders from those that have 
not very much shot at winning the race. Races are always exciting. There's always big surprises, big prices, and there's there's always a, a few favorites that win as well. You want to be able to give yourself every possible chance to cash in on this once a year Super Bowl for horse players, because uh, this is our weekend that we look forward to all year to cash in on some big payoff tickets. So don't wait to get started in your handicapping. You can go out to our website and hear the come.com now and you can uh, download the uh, uh, the profiles immediately once uh, your payment is processed. You'll also see where we we also make our selections available for both days as well at discounted pricing. So you can sign up for that as well. But keep an eye out here on Facebook. I mean, on um, where are we at? YouTube. On YouTube, uh, we'll try to get as many divisions out there as we can. Thanks for watching, and uh, good luck in seven days from today.